Hello everybody and welcome back. Uh, today's video is um, something completely different. Uh, it's a short repair video um, because this is, uh, well, this is my old um, amplifier and um, I got this when I was 16 or 17 and I've had it ever since and it's basically been running every day and um, it's never been repaired so far so it is a um, really good example of something that got the chance to become old and um, it's a Denon PMA 700V um, it, it can't switch video so it was one of the first that could do that but there's no HDMI no digital no nothing in here and um, yeah since this thing is so old um, its problems are uh, different than from most other components that go broken uh, and this one here is uh, starting to fail at the solder joints and I know what some people will say well just switch out all the capacitors and you'll be fine and no there's no bad capacitor in here um, although these capacitors are at least 33 years old um, first of all they're not Chinese they're Japanese and uh, they're not driven all that hard and they don't really go bad now what happens with these things is um, the solder joints go bad after a while because um, with all the transistors um, that have three legs and the two outer legs are usually longer than the one in the middle um, it gets a different strain on them and after a long time this actually leads to them breaking the solder from uh, from the hole and uh, from then on when current uh, passes through there it just uh, burns away or takes away the rest of the metal and until they're until they're basically without a connection and uh, quite often you have amplifiers like that that work perfectly when they're cold and then they heat up and they start producing pops or whistles or start hissing or turn off altogether and this was one of them and uh, the diagnostic is pretty simple um, I have my trusty tool, uh, which is just this simple wooden rod. And uh, what I do is uh, I actually just tap the board. So I go onto the board, place it down, and give this thing a few taps. And you can actually home in onto the locations where your faults are um, because if the fault is over here and I tap back here then nothing's going to happen but once I get really really close um, the the effect uh, is going to become very much pronounced um, also cleaning is always a good idea um, sometimes cleaning is also always a good idea uh, you might have some dead bugs in there and uh, the thing is when when insects um, when they die either they dry out just like that or sometimes they leak fluids and uh, those fluids are uh, very conductant so in really old computers that was a really really big problem if you had some cockroaches in your um, in your electronics and they die and they'd get hot they'd start frying and um, they're basically their their body liquids um, were conductive and you would have bugs in the system so that's where that saying comes from um, no but as I said what, what I'm doing is actually I'm, I'm I'm going around here and, and I'm giving it the, the tappity tap and I use the uh, the wooden rod uh, because it does have a certain mass so if you go like this you have a you have a defined um, energy that you're putting on the board and um, yeah with this board I basically went through the board and I pretty quickly discovered that 
up here where the preamp sits, um, there were a number of uh, transistors that had uh, worked loose their middle pin, which is not uncommon. And there were a few larger ceramic resistors over here, which, were, which are part of the uh, voltage dividers um, for the zero volt rail. And uh, they were bad too. In fact, I, I tapped one of them and the whole amp just switched off and uh, the, its pin was poking out um, on the bottom. And uh, well, I went through the whole board with my trusty magnifying glass um, with the illumination and uh, it's just it's, it's just work of patience just go through it have a look at each and every connection um, because I knew that this thing was working um, when it was cold because it was working perfectly so I was pretty sure that it was no component it might have been a trimmer or a potentiometer but I was pretty sure that it was none of that, so um, all I had to do was uh, give it the tappity tap and uh, work through all of the uh, solder points. And you can easily see when they're bad um, because they they really work themselves. And also on the lower side of the board, um, you can make out where there was heat, so. You have some discoloration down here and up here, and you also have some discoloration here. So those are the parts that are getting hot. And those are probably the ones that will start working themselves loose first. Um, what's also always a good idea is when you have any components that are mounted to cooling brackets, um, check them too, because uh, quite often the cooling brackets are made from aluminium and uh, the components have copper legs and aluminium and uh, and copper have uh, they, they lengthen different when they warm up so you have strain on the solder joints there and you can just work yourself through that and um, for me it did take a while because uh, there was one that i didn't find at first um, but after a while i resoldered uh, I think six or seven up here, three down here, one somewhere down here, and uh, now it's working perfectly again. And uh, it's it's one of those examples where, where a broken device has no broken components, just uh, broken connections. And uh, especially with age, this happens a lot more, even though this doesn't have lead-free solder or stuff. Um, it's just that the the physical strain and, and the electrical strain on the connections just wears out the uh, the solder. And once this was done, it was a lot of work um, and it, it took a lot of time. So you, you just go, you have your uh, magnifying glass and you've got a pen and, and each and every connection that looks bad you, you just mark it with a pen and you take the uh, you know, the soldering iron and take it to all of those spots and just reflow them and give them a little bit of uh, fresh solder and once you're done um, you have a working amplifier again and um, I really love this amplifier I really really love it um, Part of that may have to do uh, with the fact that I bought it from the first money I ever earned working uh, for another company or for somebody um, in general. But uh, yeah, don't give up on old equipment. Most of the time it's uh, still working fine. Uh, these things are built to last. You just have to be careful, uh, like with this one, um, there are actually live connections back here and uh, this is different from modern equipment where all of this is shielded um, I don't know 30 35 years ago nobody really cared about that uh, so um, these pins here would be live so always be careful always unplug it first um, make sure that nothing can happen and then work your way forward 
yeah yeah i just wanted to show this because it's uh, such a nice example um that's already it uh i like it it's working again it's going back um it's actually been used almost every day since i purchased it because um, this here is still the amplifier on my uh, main workstation and i use it to watch youtube i use it to listen to music podcasts everything um, even my my online meetings are amplified by this amplifier and um, it, i would have really been sore if uh, i hadn't been able to fix it and clean it back up again and yeah and once you've done uh fixing it up uh, make sure to clean all all the um, mechanical switches clean all the potentiometers um, what also works is if there are relays and you can't get inside the relay just just give them a few wax uh, with the back of a uh, screwdriver just to make sure that if there's any buildup in there which is loosely on the contacts it'll just fall down and um, that just gives them a little bit of uh, refresh yeah apart from that really short video um thank you very much for watching and bye